you were a fan of WWE during its resurgence in the late 90s, chances were you remember the WWE's fetish for stables. There was the Puerto Rican group Los Boricuas, Biker Gang The Disciples of Apocalypse and the South African Apartheid group The Truth Commission. But none stood out more than the Nation of Domination, a heel faction loosely based on both the Nation of Islam and the Black Panther Party. Headed by Farouk, the group would be active between 1996 to 1998, consisting of many different members. But what happened to each one, and where are they now? Number 1. Clarence Mason As an obnoxious attorney, Clarence Mason would be one of the first members of the NOD, co-founding the group with leader Farouk. He entered the WWE in 1995, playing off the publicity lawyers had gotten during the OJ Simpson trial. He would mould into the role very well, because in real life, he was an actual attorney. But in 1997, he would be kayfabe fired from the group. According to Mason, he requested to be taken out of the group because he was uncomfortable with their racial comments in storylines and in interviews. In an interview with In Your Head Wrestling, he commented, I wasn't a part of the creative aspect of that. But as far as race was concerned, clearly Vince McMahon is an opportunist. There were some racial aspects of it. Clearly, if you look at what happened between Farouk and Ahmed Johnson, they played that step it and fetch it Uncle Tom routine, and that was what they did at the time. Mason would resurface in WCW briefly, managing both Chris Canyon and Harlem Heat 2000. But in 2000, he would leave the wrestling world, returning to his original profession, a practicing attorney. Number 2. PG-13 some fans might be unaware, the NOD was originally formed in Jerry Jarrett's USWA promotion and led by tag team PG-13, consisting of members Kareem Alajuan, Sir Mohammed, better known as Mo, Elijah, who also debuted as Fantasio in WWE, Bracus, Shaquille Ali, better known as Tracy Smothers, Randy X, and Queen Moesha, better known as Jacqueline in WWE. The duo would go on to wrestle as a tag team in WWE and for a short period of time, become sub-members of the NOD, not usually wrestling, but rapping alongside the group during their entrance. However, during the group's expansion, the team would be kicked out, not only released from WWE, but strangely, their rap verse in the Nation of Domination song on WWE's Music Volume 2 album, We Gotta Wrestle, was removed from US releases. The team would appear in both ECW, WCW, and later on on the independent circuit. One half of PG-13 JC Ice, now going under the ring name Jamie Dundee, would appear on the Jerry Springer show, with Daddy Bill Dundee. He would later appear totally intoxicated in a kayfabe commentaries interview, shooting on the likes of The Undertaker, Randy Savage, John Cena, and many more, dropping a few N-bombs in the process. Other half Wolfie D would overhaul his image in 2000, bulking up and creating a gothic look, signing with the WWE once more under a developmental contract and wrestling in OVW. After not moving up the ranks, he would join TNA and be part of the stable The New Church with Father James Mitchell until 2004. He would open up a wrestling school called Wolfie D's House of Champions in Nashville and currently wrestles in traditional championship wrestling. Number 3. Farouk. After being kicked out of the group, the former leader of the NOD would go on to form a tag team with Bradshaw, joining the Ministry of Darkness and later becoming the APA, serving as protection to various wrestlers. After 13 years with the company, the former WCW World Champion would be released from the WWE due to budget cuts. Damn! He would be inducted into the 2012 WWE Hall of Fame and make a few appearances on special shows, such as Old School Raw and WrestleMania 31, celebrating Daniel Bryan's Intercontinental Championship win. Simmons is now fully retired and makes a number of appearances at wrestling conventions. Number 4. Crush Bryan Adams would start his WWE career all the way back in 1990 as the third member of Tag Team Champions Demolition. He would go on to having a singles career as a new fan favourite Kona Crush, but turned his back on the fans, allying with Mr. Fuji, adopting a Japanese sympathiser gimmick. But shortly after his return in 1995, he was arrested and jailed for purchasing steroids and possessing an illegal firearm. Upon his return, his real-life troubles would be incorporated into a storyline, with attorney Clarence Mason being his quote-unquote manager and for a short time, joined the Nation of Domination. After being kicked out by Farouk, 
he would start his own stable, a biker faction called the Disciples of Apocalypse, warring with the NOD. Crush would leave the WWE partially in protest of the Montreal Screwjob and sign with rival WCW, joining the New World Order and forming a successful tag team with Brian Clark as Chronic, winning the WCW Tag Team Championship. After both returning to the WWE under the same tag team, wrestling in Japan for Wrestle 1 and even trying his hand at boxing, he was found dead at his home in Tampa, Florida on August 13, 2007 after a cocktail of drugs was found in his system. He was only 43 years old at the time of his death. Number 5. Rocky Maivia What can you say about The Rock that hasn't already been said countless times? He is arguably the most successful member out of the stable and most probably in WWE history. After starting out as blue chipper Rocky Maivia, fans were unimpressed with the smiling goof. However, after turning heel and joining the nation, things gradually changed. As a cocky intercontinental champion, The Rock had the momentum, the look, the charisma and in a big way, he just had the it factor. He would oust former leader Farouk becoming the new leader of the nation, but he would go on to having bigger success in the WWE, leaving the nation behind and becoming a star in his own right, becoming one of the most successful stars of his era. Whilst The Rock had started a career in acting in line with his WWE career, in 2003, he would say farewell to wrestling full time, instead focusing on his film career, landing roles in huge blockbuster films such as The Mummy Returns, The Scorpion King, Walking Tall and many more. Between films, he would make sporadic appearances in WWE and have a major feud with John Cena, leading to a main event match at WrestleMania 28. He would enjoy his 8th WWE Championship run in 2013, defeating CM Punk, but he would drop the title to John Cena in their second meet at WrestleMania 29. Whilst he's made a number of guest appearances at WrestleMania, The Rock has had no intention of returning to WWE full time, despite rumours suggesting he's primed to make an epic return. Presently, Dwayne Johnson is still in the Hollywood spotlight, working harder than ever and being featured in a number of upcoming films, notably starring in the upcoming film Fighting With My Family, which is based on the true personal story of WWE superstar Paige and her family of professional wrestlers. Number 6. D'Lo Brown After working in the WWE in the mid-90s as enhancement talent, AC Connor returned to the WWE in 1996, this time as D'Lo Brown and a member of the NOD. D'Lo would be the longest surviving member of the group, finding championship gold along the way. He would work with WWE until 2003 and thereafter moved to TNA, teaming with Gran Apollo and winning the NWA World Tag Team Championship, staying with the company until the summer of 2004. After his TNA run, he hit the international independent circuit, wrestling in Japan and the United Kingdom. In 2008, the WWE brought D'Lo back, but he stayed there less than a year as the WWE cut him loose as part of cost-cutting measures. D'Lo was never at a loss for work, as promotions like Ring of Honor, TNA and All Japan Pro Wrestling brought him in and D'Lo continues to work in the squared circle. Number 7. Kama Mustafa Although Charles Wright would be more recognised as playing the godfather in the WWE, he has played a number of gimmicks since his debut in 1992. Besides the Witch Doctor, he would also become Kama the Supreme Fighting Machine and after that, a militant thug named Kama Mustafa in the NOD. Since leaving the WWE in 2002, he continues to work as a manager at the Cheetah Strip Club in Las Vegas. The club is said to be very popular and it's been reported that the Godfather is making at least 6 figures per year. He still makes sporadic appearances in WWE, bringing his hose out to the delight of WWE fans, with his most recent appearance being at Raw's 25th anniversary show. In 2016, Wright was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame under his Godfather persona. Number 8. Owen Hart Enough is enough and it's time for a change. Those were the words of Owen Hart when he inexplicably joined the Nation of Domination. In fact, there seems to be little explanation on why he was part of the pro-black group, with the only explanation being he was a black heart, adopting a more edgy and anti-social attitude. He wouldn't last long in the Nation, reverting back to his original gimmick of the blue blazer. Tragically though, Owen Hart died at the 1999 Over the Edge pay-per-view during his entrance a stunt which involved him coming down the rafters high in the arena. His harness was released too early and he fell 70 feet to his death. WWE decided to continue the event, sparking controversy. 
a tribute was held for him the next night with the entire WWF roster, titling this show Raw is Owen. Number 9. Mark Henry in 1996, after competing in the Summer Olympics, WWE signed Mark Henry to a 10-year contract. Since then, WWE fans have witnessed incarnations of Henry being an All-American athlete, a member of the Nation of Domination, his role as Sexual Chocolate and pairing with Mae Young, as well as the Hall of Pain, but not before forgetting his trademark Salmon Blazer. But after wrestling in the WWE for well over two decades, the former WWE World Heavyweight Champion has recently retired from in-ring competition. Now working in a backstage role with WWE as a backstage producer, the world's strongest man is still open to a wrestling return, but only if his body feels right. Mark Henry was inducted into this year's WWE Hall of Fame, giving an emotional speech. Number 10. Ahmed Johnson Big man Ahmed Johnson took the WWE by storm, winning the Intercontinental Championship less than a year after his 1995 debut. Unfortunately, kidney problems forced him to relinquish the belt and recuperate off television for a number of weeks. Upon his return, he feuded with Farouk and his nation of domination, but eventually turned heel, joining the nation. The WWE released Johnson after his latest injury, a torn ACL, so he jumped to WCW, working as Stevie Ray's tag team partner Big T as part of Harlem Heat 2000. But Johnson was subsequently released by WCW and thereafter worked the indie circuits briefly, retiring in 2003. He worked as a trainer at Booker T and Stevie Ray's wrestling school, but when last heard from, he was one of the many litigants in the class action lawsuit against the WWE for traumatic brain injury and seems to have ballooned in size, looking nothing like his former self from his days in the WWE. And number 11. Savio Vega Juan Rivera started off his WWE run strangely as Quang the Ninja in 1993. Even though it lasted for just under two years, the gimmick wasn't popular. Juan was then repackaged as Savio Vega and allied with kayfabe childhood friend Razor Ramon, losing in the finals of the 1995 King of the Ring tournament. He feuded with Steve Austin before fading into the background, losing a number of undercard matches. Vega then turned heel, joining the Nation of Domination, before forming his own stable, Los Bariquas, and being involved in the 1997 WWE Gang Wars. He would enter the Brawl for All tournament before leaving the WWE and joining the IWA until 2008, before working as a road agent for TNA and working in the Indian promotion Rinka King. Vega has since been active in many Puerto Rican promotions, having most success with World Wrestling Council, World Wrestling League, and more local smaller promotions such as CWA. Well guys, that was every single Nation of Domination member and where they are now in 2018. Have any more suggestions for where they are now videos? Let us know in the comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.